Greg already went off to Samuk and he called me and said that the road wasn't as bad as it was last time and he was able to make it just fine. So we really loved that other spot there that had the cows and the pasture in between and that valley between the, um, the mountains there where the waterfall is. So that's what we're going to do. And so we've got all of our stuff here in the uh, lancha and he's taking us back over. Poor guy is so tired. He's been hauling us there and back and there and back. And, but he did a great job. So um, I'm really happy with this and I think we're going to have a really nice night. It's been a day. I'm pooped. And I wasn't even the one doing all the, the rowing. All the rowing. I didn't even have to ride down here. What the hell did I do today? What did I do? I got trucked down here. Yeah, to be uh, I, rowed I, around. I just sat there and got rowed around, and I'm pooped from it. I'm I'm exhausted by it. So it's about what quarter to six. I'm just kind of hanging out because it is windy AF so it doesn't make for a particularly pleasant getting up and going out there then at some point we're gonna have to brave this so I guess Moxie is watching television that's basically what this is for her right the nature channel time when we're waiting for the Romero which is the rower and so this is what we're doing and Jess is getting fussy because Moxie's all wet and all dirty and muddy now and so she keeps saying it's time to stop it's time to stop but look at look at this beast try stopping this beast prefiere que nosotros estamos aquí y las cosas atrás Today I have no idea where we're going. Um, we're starting in Aguacate. Mm -hmm. Our bikes are parked in Aguacate and we're supposed to be heading um, east, back down, east over to, uh, to try and get to Coban. We have no idea what the road is like. I have a feeling that it's dirt because the uh, section from Pica de la Trinidad to Aguacate uh, in Aguacate turned out to be dirt. So I, I have a feeling that the next section is also going to be. But it was nicely graded. It's just slower going is all. Just as long as it doesn't turn into shit, so we'll be okay. Son familiar que murió en los estados. Oh. Un poco preocupados para ir a alcanzar el muchacho. A little kid, like 18 years old, died. So they're bringing the, his, his body back. He died in, what do you say, Greenville, or North Carolina, South Carolina? Yeah. I mean, he was already in the States. This wasn't like a coyote no. situation or something like that. He was already there. So apparently his car uh, in the States just disappeared. And he was just dis disappeared for a while. They haven't solved what happened. Uh, that's wow. tough. Hopefully this is good. There's a life I lead in this city Hurrying to cut my teeth we're in Todos Santos. We ultimately came through this stretch that took us through a bunch of local towns. Uh, it's, it's off the main highway. It was a decent off-road stretch, not like outrageous, nothing brutal. It was probably over an hour and a half of dirt. Mm -hmm. We didn't stop for lunch. I sort of was the one pushing. <laughs> I was doing that thing where I say, well, you know, if you want to take a break, we could stop for something to drink. We could just take a break. I mean, you know, if you want, we could. So I need to be more uh, uh, straightforward about my needs. We started today at 37 degrees Celsius, and now we're at, what, 22? 
less than that, I think 20. Yeah, so this is the Cuchimatanes. This is like the highest point in Guatemala. The highest town, I think. Um, and they're, it's really cool. It's very indigenous. The men all wear their typical dress. It Which looks, is unusual in Guatemala yeah, these days. Yeah, normally it's just the women that you see wearing it. But here it's actually the men who wear it more. Or maybe it's just more obvious because it's like a purple and a white and a pink. Um, and they wear these like baggy pants. What is this? Casa Familia? Hotel Casa Familia? Hotel y Restaurante. So it's a combination of family, house, hotel, restaurant. Yeah. Parking is it's is an interesting situation because they wanted us to pull in through this like little hallway that's here. In some cases, no matter what you say as far as like big motorcycle, moto grande, still they see it as like a motorcycle, you know, and they don't think about the side case or whatever. So they were sure that I was gonna just be able to pull them in here. I was like, no, not a chance. So we're parked out on the street, and then when the artisan artisanry shop closes, then we can pull our bikes into the shop and that's where they'll stay for the night. So that's good. <laughs> I'm not worried about somebody stealing the bike. While I was out um, putting stuff on the, you know, the luggage on the bikes, a young kid who works at the artisan shop came out and was watching me pack up and starts asking questions about like, where did you come from? Where are the bikes from? Um, and like, in those cases, almost always the second or third question was, how much does your bike cost? How much does the bike cost? <laughs> and and it made me think because we have this sort of tendency, this weird kind of feeling of like, well, that's not important. Don't why are you asking me how much my bike costs? But having you know done this for a while now and, and received those questions, I mean, my take on it is a little bit different now. I think in most cases, you know, people are sort of they're seeing what you're doing, they're excited by it, and the money question isn't sort of to make you feel guilty or bad or like, oh, look at how rich you are, or look at how little I have. But it's more of an aspirational question, like what would I need to have to be able to do this too? Grounding this thing that's like fantastical in some sort of reality of like, well, for me to do this, how much do I need? And I think it's sort of similar for, for Moxie as well, because I get that question about Moxie. I get how much does she cost, as if they want to buy her. Um, but again, I think it's the same thing. It's sort of like she looks beautiful. How much would she cost, and how much would it, how how long would it take for me to save up to get one like that? So I don't I don't really take offense to that. People are normally surprised about how much she costs, which really wasn't that much in the end. I say that she was about uh, three hundred dollars. <laughs> I, I slammed on my brakes and got a honk from a guy behind me because oh no. of the turn, so yeah. Okay, Moxie, we know all about your needs. All the neighborhood dogs have come out. They're not thrilled about you being here. This is what we've got coming ahead of us, and it's just a series of like corkscrews and switchbacks down the mountainside. We've hit a couple of roadblocks for uh, construction. This one is a, at least a 45 minute delay is what it looks like. Half of them have their engines running. And for the motorcyclists, they've got engines running and they're sitting on their bikes, like two up, waiting to, you know, to go as if like it could change, you know, minute by minute. Relax, like we're here, it's gonna be 30 minutes. I'm not very excited about this part of it. It's been a long day, a hot day. And now we still have this stretch left to make it to the Airbnb. So I'm keeping it together and I'm going to look forward. We got time on our side. 
in a state of hope I need you on my fire I want you to know That every time you're away I long for you so much I can find my way We got everything here At least to stay alive And the time that we share Moxie! This was 15 Q for the pound at uh, Show us what it is. the butcher shop. Yeah, give her the whole nice big piece. Yeah, look at that juiciness. Take it. Good girl. <laughs> so we're going for a little walk in our Airbnb to see what animals they have. It looks like they had quail eggs and that's what they do here. By the way, do you notice Jessica's fat lip? She got a sunburn on her lip and now it's split, mm -hmm. so just in case you're focused on it and you cannot pull your eyes off of that. I got there a bit of go. a fat lip Let's here. Let's just acknowledge it out front. Best way to handle those kind of things. Like a big zit, like right on your forehead. ¿En este? Son gallinas Oh yeah, yeah, these are quail. So he says they're just a different type of, uh, of chicken, which obviously is his way of saying you know, not saying knowing. I don't really know what, what they're called. But that is a great looking cock over there. Wow, look at him. He's got a couple of long feathers there, just like feathers in a Frenchman's hat. Look at those. Here's a mini uh, football concha. Uh huh. So what did you think about the quails? It's a nice uh, little homestead area here yeah. that they've got. We'll uh, have to I try the actual quail eggs. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to do a taste test between the quail eggs here and some of the chicken eggs to see if we can actually taste the difference because we've never really had quail eggs. Oh my god, they're so tiny. <laughs> I just wanted quail whites. Well, honestly. you don't get quail whites. <laughs> gobble, gobble. So about a two minute walk from um, our cabana is this little lagoon. Lagoonyish. It's very lagoonyish. Maybe Moxie wants to go in there because that's just what we need. Stinking up our cabana is a wet dog. Let's go, let's go get it. Good girl. So athletic. Jess has a few client calls that she's got to do until uh, just after midday. So I'm going to take advantage of a little more flexibility in my work schedule. And I'm going to head over to a place called Simuk Champe, which is uh, like where this river kind of pools up into these beautiful turquoise swimming holes and things. We were there a few years back. It was a tough ride. It's about 25 kilometers of dirt. The first half is pretty good and the second half gets a little sketchier. So we'll see what it's like at this time of year. Hopefully uh, I make it. Hopefully it goes well. We were riding high. Do you remember? No one will deny. We were invincible heading for the sky. Before we started falling It is time to go. Greg already went off to Samuk and he called me and said that the road wasn't as bad as it was last time. I'm gonna get Moxie suited up. She's been hanging out over here by my bike, uh, resting in the cool ground with all the flies around her. <laughs> Moxie, you ready to go? You ready to go for a ride? Are you ready to go for a ride? Yeah, good girl. I am a little concerned. <laughs> There's a, a stretch of road here that leads out of this Airbnb that is quite up and down and it's not paved. Yesterday or the day before when Greg had me on the back and we were coming back from a restaurant, his pannier hit a rock and knocked him and nothing happened. So I'm just a little bit concerned. So I am going to do the ride myself <laughs> without Moxie. I'll have her run along behind me and then when I get to the flat part, I will put her on. It is what it is, and it's the only way to get out of here, so we're gonna do it. And then we'll go hang out at the cafe where I'm gonna meet Greg in Koban.
We're here, made it to Semuk. A hot, sweaty mess. See how far of a walk that is. Please don't say it's a lot. We made it to Cardomomo's Cafe. Steak. Okay, dismount. And uh, Moxie is resting. Not here. <laughs> that there was a cat or something that got her attention. So I don't normally get a chance to really like, travel on my own with Moxie because Greg and I generally travel together. But this is sort of what it looks like when I'm traveling alone. Since I've got my computer, I've got all of my stuff here, and then I've got the dog, and she's normally attached to my chair. And then I can park my bike over there in a place where I can see it, and we just hang out here until uh, until it's time to go. There are those things that you got to think about, like the the bathroom or going into a place that doesn't allow dogs, and looking for grass for her. But uh, it's a really cool experience. about 12 o'clock and they're doing some construction so they're doing that same thing where they they stop you um, and they only let one side go each hour so there was one blockage at 12 and then there's gonna be another one at 1 so Greg thinks he's going to be able to make it for the one at 1 then it's still gonna be another hour or so until he makes it to Coban where we're meeting hello yes, that was good, isn't it? I made it from Semuk Champe uh, to meet up with Jess, who's trying to escape my rotating camera, and Moxie, who is not. Now we're going to head north to this area called Chisek. I guess that's the town, and then there's some caves around there, so... We'll either end up camping somewhere, or caving somewhere, or hoteling somewhere. The caves that we were aiming for turned out to be like a 30 minute hoof into the bush and leaving our bikes and it was already, what, 5.30? So, some nights that's uh, not the way it's gonna work out and we end up at a hotel. Jesse's not happy with me huh? because I just beelined it for the restaurant instead of staying with her and getting all of Moxie's things and doing it the right way. So Jess, of all the moto chores, <laughs> why is this one your favorite? Because I get to use the toothbrush, so it's sort of like painting. So I get to paint on the, the oil onto the chain. The moto people will be thinking, why are you applying it that inefficient way? <laughs> and the explanation is, number one, because it can be hard to find the spray out here in Guatemala. An MSR bottle full of oil is easy to refill. Number two, because we have one of those automatic lube chainers, uh, lube chainers, chain lubers, the Moto Breeze, and so that really does most of the job of applying it. This is sort of the extra double, triple check. We're riding to go up to Sayashe, and in Sayashe is where we're going to meet the boat captain, and he's going to let us park our bikes at his home to keep them safe, and then he's going to take us to the lancha, the, his boat, that, that takes about an hour to get to this luxury eco lodge on an island, and that's where we're going to stay tonight. Oh, he's pooping. That was a poop and a pee. Oh. Did it get I got you? a bit of it on my nose. Oh. Yeah, can you believe it? A monkey did poop on my nose. <laughs> Make sure that you subscribe to our channel here on YouTube so that you can see what happens in the next episode. I have to put out a little disclaimer here from Greg. He wanted me to let you guys know that the road to Semuk Champe wasn't as bad as it was in the past. And the reason why he went down wasn't because of the road. It was because he was paying attention to a different road while he was making that turn. And that's why he went down. So we just needed some clarification there. I want to share with you guys a little bit about my struggles when it comes to off-roading. You'll have seen in, in the past episodes that a lot of the times when there's a technical section, I get Greg to ride it for me. 
if that's a construction site or if it's one of those bridges that has those pipes in it or if it's the last stretch before we reach a campsite. Um, I'll get him to ride it. And the more that I ride with Moxie and ride alone with Moxie, the more I realize that I need to be able to do it myself and I need to have the confidence that I can get through it on my own. And it's, it's not that I don't have the skills. Um, I've taken the BMW off-road course here in Guatemala twice, the level one. So I understand the technique of riding off-road and I've used it. Um, and I've fallen plenty of times. I've gone down many times and I know just to let the bike go down and jump off and everything will be okay. And I'm, I'm not afraid of getting hurt, uh, which, which might seem a little odd, but that's not the thing that, that gets me and stops me from doing it. It's one, it's more, I'm afraid of, of damaging my bike and then the costs associated with getting it repaired. And two, which is probably the bigger thing is that I'm afraid of looking silly and feeling embarrassed of going down. I guess I have that thing in my head where I'm worried that I'll go down, there'll be a bunch of cars behind me, I'm gonna hold up traffic, they're gonna look at me and think, silly girl, why are you riding this big bike? Um, you, why, you shouldn't be riding if you can't pick it up. All of those things. And it just, it just gets to me and it prevents me from, from trying a section. So it's something that I really want to work on and if any of you women riders out there or even guys have dealt with a similar thing and, and have some advice from me, I'd love to hear it. But uh, it's, it's something that's definitely been with me from the beginning and it's, it's something that I'm ready to change. Anyhow, I hope you guys subscribe to me here on YouTube and at Go Roughly for Facebook and Instagram so that you can follow along with my story. It was great talking to you guys and I'll see you soon.